Hello, it's Sarah. And I'm working with polymer clay, guys. I decided to retry a project. I was fooling around yesterday, and I made something, and I burnt it. And I have a feeling I just need to readjust my um, pasta machine, not my pasta, my toaster oven. So no biggie, just disappointing. And uh, I haven't baked clay in a while, so who knows? I mean, maybe the kids touched it. Anything could have happened, but um, I also baked it on glass, which I never bake it on glass. I bake it on a tile. So this may, to, may have played into it. I don't know, um, but this is it. So basically it's this here. And then I decided to do it in paper because I was really kind of discouraged. And my thought was, I'll show you in a sec. I don't, my stickles is still a little wet. Dana had given me these frames in my happy mail and I've had them before as well like I probably could go and find some more around here um, you know you see these all the time at the craft stores and I've just never really known what to do with them so I got to thinking and I wanted to do something with polymer clay I went down the basement and I cut some pieces of glass this is just like a window pane glass that you would put, you know, I do stained glass, but this is just like a for a picture frame type thing. So I basically made a template and measured this out to fit in the back of these frames. And I was going to do something in polymer clay. And I did it, I thought of the glass because I thought if I put gems in there, it could be a sun catcher or whatever, you know. Um, well... I ended up doing this little uh, stamp. This is by, this is a um, Cam and Chloe, it says. I got it on clearance at Ho Hobby Lobby. Hampton Art. It's a little fairy sitting on some ha um, mushrooms. And all of a sudden I thought, well, I want to use that. So I kind of made, I stamped it all out, and then I did some fussy cutting and layered certain pieces of it to give it a dimensional effect and then glued it in the frame. So I did one in watercolor. I just used my distress markers, my Tim Holtz distress markers. And then I did this one. I first gave it a coat of matte medium, the paper, because I used, just used watercolor paper to, to seal it. And then I just used my acrylic paints and just painted this one. Um, but again, I layered the different effects, like the different her wings have two layers and everything else is basically just one layer. And I use my gel pens and everything. I just think it looks really sweet. I think it's a cute little window. I mean, I don't know. You could put this on a card maybe, right? The front of a card. So then this morning I got to thinking I was going to do this. I was going to make a video for you guys on how I did this. And I may still do that. But my original thought was to do it in clay. So I got the clay back out and decided, all right, let's try it one more time. And, you know, I'll have to, before I bake it, I'll just make sure that I check the temperature and all that stuff. So, and I also, I have these other smaller frames, so I cut glass for those too. I thought I could do maybe an applique piece in there. You know, and they could be, I don't know. You don't really need the glass if, because I'm going to do this piece today because I wasn't sure if baking it on this was a good idea. I'm no expert. I just like to play. Um, so I cut up a um, cereal box, Cheerios. So I'm going to glue this to the back and then I'll put, I'll glue the, polymer clay tile there. So it's basically an art tile, right? Um, so all I've done so far, I was just, now I don't know where my clay is. I had, here it is. Um, I'm conditioning some blue clay to make the background. This was blue. And it turned green. I burned it. Oh my God. So sad. <laughs> um, but don't get discouraged, you know. That's how we learn, right? You gotta make some mistakes. So all I'm gonna do is get this rolled out enough to get it in the pasta machine, because I like to use my pasta machine to condition my clay. 
so you just fold it keep folding going back in it's um by amico i believe i got it at home or ac more and i think i'm at about a number seven and i think that's a good width because i am going to be layering that's my thought anyway i'm going to layer so let's go with that that's about a number seven I want to stamp it out first and I'm going to stamp it out with ink so you may waste some of your clay you're going to get ink on some of your clay but that's okay. I have tons of clay I'm, I'm not stressing over it and I I know that because I did it on the other ones I want to go I want to kind of go with her and then get as much of this flower in there as I can because the whole picture doesn't fit um, in that little frame there's something on my stamp <sighs> um, so and I also noticed that some ink is getting on this piece of rubber here too so I had more a mark like see I have a little black mark anywho um, so just you know but we're gonna ink it up with a permanent ink and I'm using archival and I'm going to maybe I'll take a q-tip and just kind of rub that wherever I think I got ink bring this in and I don't need to press too hard but I definitely am going to give it I'm standing up and going to give it some good pressure it's not the indention that I want I just want a clean stamp with the ink all right I think I did good all right so now what you want to do is decide where what part of the pattern you want to show can you see what I'm doing and I'm going to use my exacto blade I just want to hold it because I'm getting a lot of glare um, hold my exacto blade because I want to get both of the flowers and both of those I think that's good so I'm going to take my exacto blade and be careful not to cut the frame itself but I'm gonna maybe now I'm gonna hold it while I cut just gently kind of using the side of the blade as a guide and kind of I don't know if you guys can hear the wind. It is super windy. Oh, it's raining too. Yeah, it's raining too now. But yeah, I'm a little more south, so hopefully we won't get it too bad. But it is windy. Super windy out there. I kind of like that blue with the black. So, because I did my frames all different, um, just to save the painting time, I just embossed them. And I'm just going to take this off. And now we're going to take a gray color and you can use what you have guys. I happen to have this cool gray that I liked called granite. I think it's called granite. But I have silver and I'm using scraps. But I have this color and it's got like little granules of black in it. I don't know if they're called granules, but so uh oh, there's an air bubble under there. So I'm going to release this from the tile there we go and let that settle down and it'll get distorted so I'm going to definitely make sure it fits in the frame when I just want it to fit in there see for some reason I can never doesn't that look like it has whatever it's gonna fit all right so this time I'm gonna cut I'm gonna I gotta get this um, ready let's see I'll just keep this on there for now and I'll use a different tile but we got to get this 
a little softer to put it in the machine too. And I'm gonna, um, let's see. I'm gonna do a big, oops, sorry, Kiwi. Come here, baby. Come up, up, oh, there she is. So basically, I'm gonna do the mushrooms. I think I'm gonna do, see, because if I don't do the whole mushroom, then, see, I liked how I painted this and I just put the top of the mushroom, popped up the top. I think I'm going to do the whole mushroom. So, you'll see. And listen, use your discretion. Do what you think is best. This is just what I think I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to make this even thinner. I want to go down to the thinnest, maybe. Um, I think that's nine. I think that's the thinnest. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to stamp it out again using the ink. And this time I really want to make sure I get... So the whole thing again, I'm going to be cutting out this time. So, oops. Not the flowers, but I want the mushrooms and the fairy. So the foliage I don't care about, but I want the mushrooms and the fairy. So hopefully we'll stamp it out, get a good impression of that. Good. All right. I'll probably go off camera for a minute to do this too because I'm, I really don't want my videos to be so long. I know I make long videos. So be careful. I'm just cutting around the stuff I need. Um, and I want to loosen that. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to loosen it from the tile so that it has some gription. And I'm going to use my sharp, you know what, maybe I'll use my, this is my older X-Acto blade. I'm going to use my new one. I have other blades. All right. So hopefully my head doesn't get in the shot. But I'm not worried about this flower. I just want, I, def, I want the whole thing here. Hmm. Let's just start with that. I'm going to be tipping it up a little so that I can see. And you want to hold the blade pretty straight because if you cut sideways, you get a beveled edge to your clay. And I'm trying to get it to be as... And I'm going to cut right across the flower because when I go to put the flower on the petal, I have to focus, sorry. <laughs> I want to go up this arm. All right, wait. I think I'm going to cut out this little square. Man, I could, I could do this so much better. So that's why I think I'm going to go off camera so I can focus. Um, so you get the idea. And then I'm going to lay that on top of here. I'm going to go off camera and cut this out because I really want to focus. I'll be right back. All right. I wasn't sure if I wanted to add this little other mushroom, but I, I do. So here's what it looks like. I cut all that stuff out. And I'm going to end up cutting out the fairy separately too, but I wanted to get this layer underneath so that the other layers come up higher. All right, so I'm going to get this too, and I'm just going to cut right over the foliage and hope for the best. Um, and like I said, I've really, after, I don't know, Doing it once before, I'm really trying to make the, my line super up and down and not slanted. 
I just think it'll give a better finished result. So let's see. The other thing is, um, yeah, I really don't need them. That uh, the bottom, we're going to have to leave. No, actually, we don't. All right, this is great. You know what? I should have shouldn't have cut that so short. All right, hopefully I've, I've not. All right, I have to get this off here. And I want to do that with a blade. As gently as you can. And then we're going to have to pick this whole thing up and put it on top of the outline on the blue. So I just kind of pull it up one little section at a time maybe. Start with the wings and then And that's why having the stamping underneath is a good idea because if you see any bit, any part of the design coming from the from underneath, um, it matches. So I mean, you can see the black line a little bit under that the second mushroom. I could probably move it down. Let me see if I can do that. I'm gonna oh, position this. I'm going to position this and it would be fine to do each piece individually but I just figured I didn't want to keep stamping and moving and whatever but I like that and then I have to do this one I'm just going to butt it right up against Am I in the shot? It's harder to do it on camera because I need to be on over it to see. And my lights are, it makes everything shiny. All right, I think that's good. Now with the paper, when I did it with paper, I used tweezers. I love using my tweezers to line up my paper. It's a very handy way to go. And see it's I didn't cut the clay. There we go. So all right, I like that. So that's one layer. That's that didn't get enough. Um gonna get what color dress do I want to do I like the yellow dress because I'll put yellow for her dress yellow for the centers of the flowers um, I want to make her with flesh tone I guess whatever color your fairy wants to be this isn't flesh tone this is yellow um so I had all these out so I'll go off camera and find some other colors and get my clay conditioned and I'll be right back okay so I decided to do the flesh tone you can't tell but I actually did the flesh tone in little pieces, the, the dress in little pieces, the hair in little pieces, and the wings in little pieces. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep it as simple as possible this time. I really better not burn this. <laughs> but I'm going to do the fairy and her, and her, <coughs> excuse me, wings. So her feet to her wings, to the tips of her wings. And I'm going to cut that out. Beautiful. You really want to get a nice solid line when you do this. And 
If you have permanent brown, that might even be a better look. I was thinking about that. What if you had a dark green color? Because then all your background foliage would kind of be green. But, you know, I haven't played around with this too much, so I'm kind of just winging it. You know me, how I do. All right, so I am going to, I really just want her body, so her legs, her wings, and her body. So that's all I need. Um, I think I'm going to go off camera and do it, guys. It's just easier for me. I think I may leave this little sliver. Let me show you. So I'm going to remove, well actually, you know what, this little sliver, it's just, it makes the clay too, and I already left it on here in the gray. I could have probably took that out. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you're a perfectionist, like evidently I am, why is this so shiny? Um, and you don't have to worry about the flower her little tip of her hair. So I'm going to go right around and up because this isn't the finished product. So I'm going to take the wing down to her face because I only need her face. Well, it's all right if we have a little hair. But don't worry about cutting out the hair yet because I'm going to do the hair separately. But I do want the whole wing and see I feel like that went way off lines because I'm not on top of it and I want her arm and it's gonna be separate this is really tricky but I think her arm fell off last time when I did it so I wouldn't be surprised And you can see how I was not cutting straight. I, I can see the beveled edge. Well, you can't because you're not even in the shot. I want her arm. I don't want to lose her arm. Because that's the whole point, really. But you can tell that this is not... straight. But when I do the wing... I'll be careful to make sure that I get that. Okay. The dress, I mean, I don't have to be as specific because I'm going to do the dress a different color. Really, I just want to make sure I get these legs decent. And her little feet. Turn the piece to make sure it's it's easy for you to do your, what you got to do. So we're not really concerned with the dress at the moment, even though I did cut some nice. Oh, I lost her arm. Did not want to do that. But I can stick it back on there. Um, I'll stick it on to the piece for sure. But I didn't want to lose the like uh, the black line. So that's a tricky part. I got to look at it. I think I'll be able to fix it. Really don't want to lose the foot. Because they're really thin, the legs. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't meant to be a polymer clay piece, probably. But it will be.
I just have to fix her arm. And I'll probably just paint in between there, but that I have to go off camera and fix it. I'll be right back. So I did end up breaking her arm off just because I'll put it I'll put the clay in there after. It'll be it'll be fine. Um I want to make sure I can get the legs and body lined up first. And this is, you know, it is fiddly guys, so bear with me. Just let the clay kind of fall into place and that way you'll get the most, um, hopefully you'll get the most true shape. This came off a little, there we go. And you can push that down because basically I really wanted, oops, the wing's totally not on top of the wing the arm and the legs and the neck and the head. That's really what I wanted, but I really wanted the um, dimension too. So if I just take a little piece of this clay and just roll her an arm. I'm gonna cut a little like, you know what, it has ink on it. I think it, you know what I'll do? It's definitely windy out there, guys. So I don't have the ink on it, but at least it's there. And I'll have to take like a tool, some type of a smoothing tool, like let's see. So here's my old exacto blade. Look at this thing. This is a Christie Friesen tool. And just kind of push it into place. I don't really like the, um, that's cute, that's good enough. I just want it to stay put. There's really nothing under there to keep it. Um. All right, now I'm gonna do the wings. So I have this, this is um, pearlescent white. And you can see from when I used it yesterday, there is a little ink in it. But it'll, it'll come out. Let's just, see it's kinda got ink running through it, but I'll just keep running it through the pasta machine. And it kinda, dilutes itself in a way, or I guess that's the right word. But you still have that nice metallic pearlescence. So I'm gonna put that over here. And this time I'm just gonna cut the wings themselves. And then I'll put her hair on top of that. So I just need the wings. And there are three wings showing, so don't forget. Um, get one, two, three. I'm going to need those, so. Um, I just like to kind of narrow it down so I, I don't get mixed up with what I need to get. <laughs> Anywho. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the wing. Hmm. Up against her head, I think. 
and then the hair will just sit right on top because see I left that piece of hair right there um, let's just go for it we gotta go for it mm. try and hold my blade as straight up and down And there is a little piece of wing. See, if I go to her head, I have to go to her head because her hair will sit on top of that. See, there's a little piece of wing right here at her collar. Did I make that happen? I don't know if I did. I think I kind of did, but I'm going to have to cut this little piece right here. I don't know if I went up against her face. It looks like that clay is super soft. It is not good. You need something with some firmness to get it to do this nicely because otherwise it's looking all kinds of fudgy. I'll do this piece separate at the bottom. Seems like it got real distorted. Still have to put the hair on top, so. And a flower. Let me see if I like this better. just kind of to give the hair somewhere to sit to and help it um, I think that looks okay so let's do super soft. It's not cooperating. I don't like that edge. I want it to be cleaner. But you get what you get. And I should actually probably be removing this with a blade, a significant blade that's not this, that's going to rip everything up. I want to go around her face, and man, it's soft. It's not cooperating. I don't need her face. I just want that little piece here. There's a piece of mica in there. Can you see that? Oh, jeez. Right here is like a piece of mica stuck to the clay. It's driving me nuts. They're just done at the wing, too. So don't worry if the hair isn't 
perfect because I'm going to put the hair on separately. It's the wing that I really wanted and I dented it, but whatever. I think it looks good. I like that. I love, love, love that, um, the clay. It's so pretty. So the hair doesn't really matter. Don't. The hair is going to go separate. And it looked pretty good. I mean, I managed to get it to look the shape of hair. So that's going to be fine. Um, and then we just need, I need a little piece to put on the neck there. So I'm going to cut like a rounded and then that and then that and then that. This is so tiny, I don't even know what I just did. So that's supposed to be part of the wing too. At least it's the same color. And I just want to make it the little face. I mean, it's getting there. I really hate that I dented the clay right there. So, anywho, all right, and then this last piece of wing. I don't have to worry about the dress because I'm going to do the dress separately too. And I'm going to use my blade to get this off. See how much easier that came off when I just scoop it up like that? It's not looking good yet. I got to get the hair. And I'm going to do, I think I might do another layer on this and this. So I'll go off camera and I'll get a couple more layers and then I'll show you how we'll finish it off. It's snowing. It's snowing right now. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. All right. I'm back. I don't even know where I left off because it's the next day. <sighs> I've had a busy day, kids. Um, I just put on another piece of her face. And I kind of squished it. And oh, I, may. I used this tool. And I just made like... It's got dents in it, her face. But I didn't like that it was so um, kind of underneath. I like it better like this, but I don't know that this is helping me, this tool. It's not smoothing it out. I get so amazed when I watch Palmer Clay artists um, smooth things out with their tools. It's so crazy. All right, but I think I like that better. And I actually poked little eyes with this toothpick. Um, I put on the dots in red. I put the flowers together. I actually brought up the, I, I put two layers of the mushroom just on the cap. I left this one layer. So this is, act, this is actually closest. So it's not proportionate. It's not perspective correct, but... I ended up doing a lot more than I did on the original one. I just figured what the heck. And I did test my oven. And I kind of tweaked the, um, the temperature a little bit. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. But I think it was because I baked it on glass. And glass conducts heat differently than 
um, the tile does so I'm hoping it'll be okay this time so here see I just cut another piece of her face out um I think all I have to do now is I was just adding the stems with the green and I'm going to just take the same green and, oops, see I had this little piece. I'm just going to make little um, applique, here I'll use this, applique leaves. So basically I just want to kind of um, get this a little bit. I'm going to move this out of the picture actually and use this tile. I just want to get it into a little snake and it's not conditioned very well. Just keep putting it through my pasta machine. Fold it, put it through, fold it and that definitely gets it more conditioned. It breaks it down, gets it softer. So now I'm just going to hopefully, I have no nails, my nails will not grow. I'm going to try and just pinch off or, you know, get a little piece of clay with my fingernail in order to make tiny little um, petals or leaves, which it's a fern. I almost thought I could actually cut out each one of these, but that would just take so long. I think it's going to be easier for me to do it this way. And this is the way I did it originally as well. And I may even need um, to make stems. So I'm kind of taking this really thin and let's bring it over and make a stem. I'm here with Kiwi. She, we were out all day. We have Maya today. We went to, um, Sorry, I can't I can't do this and talk at the same time. Get air, it's called. It's like uh, I think they have them that that are called Sky Zone or and it's like a, it's like trampolines everywhere you go. So we did that this morning, and then we went and saw Black Panther, the movie that everyone's talking about. It was good, definitely. I'm not, I don't care about the um, superhero movies. Like even Iron Man. I think I saw the first one. Um, I've seen a few of the Batmans. I think I've seen Superman. Um, but she wanted to see Black Panther because I guess all the kids are singing it. And it was good. It was definitely good. Um, so we did that. And now she's going to, this is my granddaughter I'm talking about, for those of you who don't know. She went to a concert at Stockton University with um, her mommy and her cousin and her tia. So she's a busy kid. And I guess I'll put a little bit over here. But it gives us a chance to do our grown-up stuff. I think, you know, we did everything she needed us to do today. See, like, I could put another... Eh, I'll do this. Right here. And then I'll bake it and let you see. I'm going to put this in the black frame. Got to make sure it'll fit. I think it might, I might just trim it a teensy bit um, when I'm finished. So I'm going to take this now. I mean, I could do little swirlies. You know how I do my little swirlies. Put this here. It is not thin enough though, but it's really hard to... Kiwi, you are just having a blast up on my shoulder. So you stick it down and then you just kind of twirl it around it on itself. And stick it down. 
so that looks pretty. And I mean, there's a couple of those. One over here, maybe I'll do. And one over here. I put those leaves on. I didn't do that last time. So it's funny because I can do two of the same projects and they won't look alike because I changed something. I can't ever do two things the same. Well, I can, but got to change it up. Or I guess I learn from my mistakes on the first one and want to fix it for the second one. But if I put three of these, I won't be mad at myself. Ooh, actually, there's a piece of um, fern over here. My of course my head's not in the way so I can't see what I was doing. But this when you do the curly Q things you have to make it really thin. So this ought to work. Alright. It's a little thicker than the others, but it'll look good. So now I'm going to take this end of it, since it's thicker, and I guess I'll do it over here. Hopefully try and make a small petal-shaped um, like teardrop-shaped, right? Not, not round. I mean, I'm kind of starting off round, but then I go like this and get it to be teardrop-shaped. And this one's kind of big. Babe, I'm filming. I'm, I'm filming. And I'm going to just put these where they're going to go, and then I'll come back with my toothpick and kind of give them like a, a, vein, a vein in the middle. Where'd it go, my toothpick? I gotta get this finished and see what it's if I'm gonna be successful. So you just up oh, did I lose one now? So you just push the toothpick into the clay toward the stem. I don't know why that has a piece of brown on it. Whatever. So you just go. You'll definitely get a nice enough look that it will look like a, a little fern in the fairy forest. So I'll go off camera because I don't want to take up, I've already taken up a lot of time. Took it up. Put it in there. I'm going to overlap on that leaf there because you can see the stamping. It goes right up on top of that leaf. So I will put a couple of oops, little guys right there. I'm kind of skipping, well, we'll see, because I should fit one right there. I get lazy. There is a little one right here, though. Yeah, you can see it. Man, I hope I don't burn this, because if I do, that would be so sad. That would not make me happy. Right, Kiwi? Whoops. 
It would be sad. I kind of squished it as I... But I want to finish these. I like these. I mean, I might end up cutting them off if I have to trim the block down. Oh, I took too much. So see how I'm just taking a lot of time? It's very time consuming. And that's why I was saying it's awful hard to decide if you're going to sell the piece. You know, maybe this not wouldn't be one of them, but all the work you put in, people don't really get it. That's why all of mine are my babies. And I don't sell them. Alright, it's coming along. I'll be back. I think, although, I could do this. This is probably like the last thing I'll do. Where's my pokey tool? Is take my little pokey tool that I can't find. It has a black. Anyway, I'll use i use a toothpick then. I can't find it. And I'm going to put like dots, three dots. And little areas. Just to give the background some texture here and there. And make it cute, you know, because... I didn't really do anything to the background. It was just kind of plain. And if I antique it, which it's not my thing, I don't, oops, see, I don't tend to antique, but see, like, um, I think this could look cute antiqued, actually. So I just may have to do that. All right, I'll go off camera. I'll be right back. All right, I think I'm done. And... I tried to do something to her face and I messed it up so then I had to put another piece of clay there and I gave her bangs because see look see this is how she actually looks but I messed her up so I gave her bangs and like tried to fix what I did but I mean that's good enough I just took this black pen and kind of stuck some eyes in there um, I'm gonna bake it and I always bake according to the packaging. And it says on the Primo clay to bake at 275 degrees for 30 minutes per quarter inch. And that means, so I'm going to guess that, you know, after I've stacked up some of this clay, it's definitely at least a quarter inch. Yeah, just about a quarter inch in some places. So I will definitely be using, um, I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes, but I'm going to use some tin foil as well to create like a, a tent over it. I'm going to bake it just like this right on here. And let me just cut this. I don't know if I even got anything just to make it straight. I want to look at it. That looks pretty good actually. Let's make sure the frame fits on top. Let me go out a tiny bit. Make sure the frame fits. And it does. So we already cut um, our cereal box that I'll glue this to. And I don't know, maybe I could paint this blue. We'll see. Because some is going to show through. Maybe while it's baking, I'll paint this blue. I'll paint this with gesso and then the same like a, a light blue color paint just in case it shows through or, or I could do black black gesso would probably work just fine I think I might do that and save the double step all right so that's what it's gonna look like hopefully fingers crossed 
Um, I'll be back and show you the finished project.